Puck face, you watch too much hockey. Puck face, from Monday to Saturday and Sunday matinees. Puck face, you're such a puck face. Live from Taylor's apartment, it's Puck Face Podcast, where hockey culture and counterculture collide. And now, the man who puts the laugh in Ryan Gets Laugh, here's Taylor. So I got my IP address banned from HockeyDB.com. Uh, HockeyDB is a wonderful little stat site run by a fellow named Ralph out of Massachusetts. It is the best source for hockey stats next to Hockey Reference, the text I find to be very easy to follow. If you go to player stats pages and you want to see just somebody's stats from the QMJHL or from the American League, all of those different leagues are color-coded, so it's pretty accessible. I quite like it. So did I slag off other users? No. Did I hack into the domain like some Canadian hacker? No. Did I spend six hours looking at old NHL drafts? Probably. Did I reorder the drafts based on how players' careers have turned out? Might have. Did I fire through so many stats pages that the thing assumed I was a robot? I don't know, whatever, fuck you. So I emailed Ralph, and I promised him that I would spend more time outside if he would unban me. And he did, and that's how you know that I am legit. <laughs> Welcome to Puckface Podcast. I'm Taylor. I'm a 32-year-old neuroatypical male with a passing interest in hockey. I'm so old, when I was born, they just called it the Testament. And if you're older than me, here's one. I'm so young, I'm less likely to be paid a living wage or ever own a house than you. Heyo. Heyo. <laughs> I tried to put a down payment on a DVD box set of house, and the bank was like, no, nah, buddy. <laughs> With me is my producer and friend, Alaris. Hi, Alaris. Hello. Yes. This is the maiden voyage of the podcast, which, if only you could crack a bottle of something over whoever came up with that phrase. This is going to take three months, and I'll probably get scurvy. I know what to call it. If I'm successful, I'll alter the course of history for the worse and get a spice rack I never use. Right next to my gun rack I don't know how to use. God bless America. So why am I doing a hockey podcast, and why should you care? Well, the short answer is... The U.S. election. But first, here's the news. A cat who was elected mayor of a small Alaskan town has died at the age of 20. In lieu of flowers, mourners are encouraged to knock a full glass of water off the kitchen table. In world news, hundreds of Argentinian police stormed a factory where Pepsi workers were protesting a mass firing. PepsiCo has released a statement assuring customers that only fake protest represents the Pepsi brand. An aggressive tick whose bite makes people allergic to red meat is arriving in Canada. Meat eaters are encouraged to wear tick repellent when hiking, and vegans are encouraged not to be so in your face about everything. In Parksville, B.C., a man was arrested after flashing a gun in order to get free McDonald's coffee. The man was known to police as he once threatened a Tim Hortons employee for giving him free coffee. And finally, a B.C. man punched a bear in the nose in a harrowing fight for survival near Qualicum Beach. The man sustained nerve damage in his knee, but says punching the bear made him finally feel better about the 2011 Cup Final. (laughs) And that's the news. News jokes. It'll be a thing. October 2016. It was a more innocent time, not actually. George the Animal Steel was still with us. Two Broke Girls was still on the air. And no one knew what was the future liberals wanted. Before the election, I always found the idea of caring about the outcome of a sporting event, really caring about it, to be pedestrian as balls. I followed hockey pretty closely, sure. I collected cards as a kid. I watched a lot of games. I consider myself a lapsed Canucks fan. Maybe it's living through two cup final losses that has rendered me jaded and aloof about hockey. We Canucks fans might not know about defense, but we sure know defense mechanisms. My fandom, semi-serious as it was, was more or less passive. I felt it was beneath me to develop strong opinions about sports ball of any kind. Politics, however, I checked polls all the time, I watched American cable news for heaven's sake. There was a level of emotional investment that I put into politics that others might put into an entertainment source. And then a racist bag of goldfish crackers won the presidency, and I went into a deep depression because, well, why didn't you? So the guy's face was frickin' everywhere, and still is frickin' everywhere, and in the weeks after the election, I had to avert my eyes from the magazine racks when I went to the drugstore to pick up the medication I get for free by accident of birth. 
I could not look at a news site for months, so I downloaded a bunch of hockey podcasts to pass the time. I never listened to Merrick vs. Wyshynski until the Bag of Oranges Time Forgot won the election. Never listened to Shot Your Five Hole, our hockey PDO cast, until General patting himself on the back won the election. And I began to watch the game less passively. I watched it more like I would watch any show, so critically. I would notice patterns in zone entries and special teams adjustments and all kinds of stuff that before I would have not noticed or just glossed over. I developed opinions about hockey. Opinions like William Nylander is a possession monster. Mm -hmm. And my special little baby boy. He is our adopted child. Or the degree of difficulty on the Patrick Cornquist supposedly ugly cup winner was actually very high and should be talked about. Or anyone who says Chris Neal's impact can't be measured in numbers hasn't been arsed to try. This story has a moral, and that moral is that I learned the value of investing in something where the stakes for society are low. If I spend all my energy thinking about things that matter, and educating myself only on things that matter, becoming articulate only in things that matter, I am left without a safety valve when those things come to a crisis point. Which is not to say that you shouldn't have both. It doesn't mean don't resist. It means that in order to resist, you have to also survive. You have to be kind to yourself. He says as a guy living in Canada, though we have our problems here too. Did you know that the father of our healthcare system wrote his thesis defending eugenics? I found that out recently. Anyway, that is why I spend hours on HockeyDB, because if I don't, I will pop a vein in my forehead. What about you, Alaris? Would you like to talk about why you're doing a hockey podcast? Well, I'm going to stick with the short answer on that one for now. Um, Mostly, we are best hockey buddies, and I wanted to be a part of this with you. Um, I just want to stay mostly in the background for now, the reason being that I am not the kind of hockey fan that you are, uh, which makes me a little bit nervous about putting myself out there into hockey fandom, Um, you know, as a casual fan who just watches the game for love of watching the game um, and doesn't really pay attention (laughs) to the details. Yeah, we tried tried doing a recording of of this episode, like making it a 50-50 sort of conversation, and it just didn't work. Um, because, you know, I just, I have more background in it, um, and we don't want this to be one of the things where it's, like, expected that the conversation be 50-50, but then it's, like, 90-10 with the guy being the 90. That would be kind of awkward. Yeah. So, uh, Alaris is in the producer role, and really the reason Alaris is here boils down to her pointing out during the Anaheim Edmonton series that Anna Leeds looks like anal beads, which... <laughs> This is the kind of insight that the people need to know. Yeah, see, those are the kinds of details that I pay attention to yes. in hockey. Um, but in this kind of scenario, I'm more comfortable being in the role of in charge of everything. Exactly. And you can do all the talking. Okay. So carry on. Thank you. Uh, anyway, why do a hockey podcast? In a word, accessibility. Now, I'm a person with an optimistic outlook on life. I'm a positive guy. And I'm here to spread that positivity. For example, every now and then, I think about all the potential NHL stars we've lost to poverty. The majority of guys who make it come from, at worst, a comfortable background. Every so often, you'll hear that rags-to-riches story about a guy who had a tough childhood but made it to the NHL, but that's the exception. For every Glenn Metropolit or Wojtek Volsky, there's hundreds of kids whose conditions growing up force them to move on from that dream. A good composite hockey stick that a kid uses in organized hockey costs $300, and it breaks like a sailor with a swear jar. Nautical imagery. That is a callback. Something I, a failed actor, would not know about. Um, A reputable hockey school costs at least 30 grand a year. Don't care about being a pro, just want to play the game you love with the buds? A beer league can run you 800 bucks. That is not including beer. Ice apparently is expensive. Anybody can buy a $20 garage hockey stick and a tennis ball and set up a few pylons. That's what I did as a kid. But we get this idea that because a few guys make it, despite challenging circumstances, anyone can. That's survivorship bias. I'm fun at parties, I promise. (laughs) Particularly if there are other people at that party who don't care for most things. Um, uh, (laughs) Right! So disability representation uh, is essentially non-existent in the hockey podcast world that I'm aware of. Uh, Alaris and I are both neuroatypical. I have sensory as well as cognitive impairments. Um, I've gotten 
quite good at passing as neurotypical, although passing really means different kinds of barriers and functioning labels are bullshit. Mm -hmm. Suffice it to say, I'm using a lot of notes to get through this. Um, I spend much of my time alone rehearsing potential conversations, HMU if you know what I mean. And it's why community theater has always been such a draw for me, and why improv can go bother somebody else somewhere. <laughs> Accessibility is a conversation that needs to happen more in hockey media, and it rarely, if ever, happens in the mainstream, and when it does, it happens poorly and without disabled people leading it. And that has consequences. For example, the NHL frequently partners with Autism Speaks. The Red Wings in particular have done a lot of stuff with AS, but other teams and individual players have as well. If you're not autistic, you might be thinking, well, isn't that just a charity for autistic people? No. No. Uh, Autism Speaks is, quote-unquote, uh, a disability advocacy organization that doesn't have autistic, autistic adults on their board. They hardcore prop up anti-vaxxers and have done so for years. They fund blatantly eugenicist research. They support the Judge Rotenberg Center, which uses straight-up torture as a means of controlling disabled children. I wish I was exaggerating. They spread harmful myths about autistic people that make it harder for autistics to get a diagnosis, particularly autistic women and people of color. They've been sued multiple times for disability discrimination. I could go on. Now, Elliot Friedman, who is an analyst for Sportsnet, seems like an otherwise nice guy, pretty routinely posts stuff by Autism Speaks on his Twitter feed for his 400,000 400, followers to see. Because there's no representation of neurodivergent voices in hockey media, this gets to go uncriticized. I'm kind of tired of that, so that's why I'm doing a hockey podcast. Maybe I'll talk about an actual game at some point. I don't know. At PuckFacePod on Twitter, I'll give you a moment to find us. Are you doing it? I'm waiting. I'll vamp while you're finding us on Twitter. Uh, at PuckFacePod, all one word. Our Abby is a puck with a face on it. It's adorable. It's adorable. It has a mustache. This podcast will sometimes be me reacting to the specifics of how a game went, which will lose a lot of my friends. But as far as like the, you know, the chess stuff with hockey, there's a lot of people who talk about that way better than I could. So I won't do it often. More so it'll be like in a video filmed in 2012 when Artemi Panarin was playing in Russia, a teammate asked him, what could you never do? Now what Artemi Panarin said is like, say you have two big jars full of ants and one of the jars is labeled racism and the other jar is labeled misogyny. And you open those two jars, and you drop them all on the floor, and all these ants are all crawling around all over, and they're, like, crawling up all over you, and you're like, oh my god, I'm covered in racism and misogyny ants. That's what it feels like to hear what Artemi Panarin said in response to that question. Um, but he's he was probably otherwise mostly a nice guy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh god. He's a good teammate. He loves the game. Um, I was joking, just yeah. so everyone knows. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, if you weren't joking, you wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be friends. Um, in which case, you know, if you, if you don't mind being covered in racism and misogyny ants, maybe you're a racism and misogyny ant farmer, like a lot of hockey Twitter is. What did ants ever do to deserve this analogy? I don't know, but I hated the movie Ant-Man. I don't experience racism as a white person or misogyny uh, as a man, so... An episode wouldn't necessarily be me talking about that specifically, but I would talk about, say, how your attractions don't somehow magically exist or develop outside of prevailing social biases. Nobody is saying that Artemi Panarin owes anyone sex. Of course he doesn't. The point is that people will say, I'm just not attracted to X marginalized group, and then just happen to not have any platonic friends from X group or follow authors from X group, or have established trust broadly with members of X group. That's because society's isms aren't in some fourth dimension outside of who you occupy intimate space with, even if you do share intimate space with X marginalized person. Sometimes, I'll also make lists of my favorite jerseys, or goal horns, because yay lists. Yay lists! Have you found us on Twitter yet? If you're under 25, maybe don't, because this has swears. Okay, well, it's now time for what will be a regular segment on Puckface Podcast. It's called, What's Not Upsetting Taylor About the Vancouver Canucks? I'm not, I'm not upset, upset now, like got no regrets, regrets now, now, I don't care about the Vancouver Canucks. So give, give me those Vancouver Canucks. Canucks. It's a wonderful day for an exercise. 
That's right, Jim Hewson. So I was fully prepared to bombard you with criticism of Sportsnet 650's new hires. Uh, Rogers, if you didn't know, is launching an all-new sports talk radio station in Vancouver in September. It's in about a week from now. And a few months ago, they, they won the radio broadcasting rights for Canucks games, so they're trying to freeze TSN out of the market as much as they can. And a few weeks ago, they announced the host of the morning show that is going to be competing with TSN's Jake Edwards and Dave Pratt. So I was going to go on a big tirade about it, and I kind of still am, but then Sportsnet announced the rest of the daily lineup, and I had to revisit some of this stuff because they also hired Sadiar Shah, Randeep Janda, and John Jank. So Sportsnet lineup is actually kind of close to a representation of Vancouver sports fan base, or a lot more than TSN, which is very much a, a white boys club on TSN 1050. Sadiar Shah, in particular, is an awesome hire. He used to be, in my opinion, the best part of the Bro, Day, Bro Jake and Dave Pratt show. He was there in the producer role, the Alaris role, uh, if you will. And now he gets his own slot on the lunch show for Sportsnet. He's born in Iran in 1984. He moved to Sweden as a kid, and he was a Canucks fan when he was living in Sweden. Uh, he's a great talker, and not that it matters on radio, but he is very easy on the eyes. Oh. Yes, do yourselves a favor and go to YouTube and search Sadi Shah Ice Bucket Challenge. Well, I will now. Yes. Um, it's pretty much how you would imagine it. So kudos to Sportsnet, and now let's have some fun with the morning hosts. They are former CTV sports anchor Myra Lawrence, former host for Sportsnet and TSN James Sabalski, and former Global News host and BC Liberal candidate Steve Darling. Ooh. Now we'll start with Myra Lawrence. Now, Myra Lawrence is fine as an evening news sports reporter. She was kind of in the nighttime Squire Barnes role on um, CTV News Vancouver Island. Her Twitter content regarding the Canucks is basically Ryan Miller's starting tonight. Great to see Manny Malhotra out there. The fun part of the show Chopped isn't having guests tell you what's in the food. It's seeing the judges criticize the food. It's seeing them tear, up, tear it apart and, and, and pick its brain. Now, it's entirely possible that Myra Lawrence has some opinions and hasn't had enough time to express them in a five-minute news hit, but the lack of anything interesting on her private Twitter feed doesn't fill me with optimism. I think that Jody Vance would have been her better choice, um, particularly considering her politics are kind of to the left of Steve Darling's and would balance them out. Uh, or Hazel May. She'd be perfect. James Sobolski uh, looks really nice in a vest. He used to fill in for Michael Landsberg on Off the Record. He's not as provocative or as good an interviewer as Landsberg is, but he's okay. But again, that's the problem. Myra Lawrence is just okay, too. If you look at his Twitter feed, Sobolski had some actual opinions on sports, so he's the best of the bunch, but you need to surround him with people who have something controversial to say. Which brings me to Steve Darling. Steve ran in the most recent election here in BC. He lost by 2,500 votes, so 63% of residents of Burnaby Lowheed thought his campaign sucked. And you might ask, what does his running for the Liberals have to do with his ability as a sports analyst? And I guess not much, but Sports Talk Radio often insists on keeping sports and politics separate. So when you choose to hire a guy who just ran for one particular party, well, I get to make an issue of it. So... Let's talk about how running as a BC Liberal reflects on Steve Darling. First of all, if you're not from around here, the BC Liberals are liberal in name only. The party is run by Stephen Harper and Rob Ford's old buddies. If you run for the BC Liberals, you tacitly support their gutting of the Employment Standards Act between 2002 and 2004. You support the BC Liberals screwing disabled people on transit in exchange for the appearance of having increased benefits. You support cuts to programs that directly resulted in the deaths of multiple at-risk youth, primarily First Nations, who aged out of the government's care. You think the predatory audit of 63,000 disabled people on benefits that found a fraud rate of 0.6% was just fine, thank you very much. You think the Liberals functionally eliminating abortion access through much of rural BC, which nobody talks about, is just peachy. You think saying the Olympics were going to cost $600 million when the government's own figures put the final tally at $900 million, not including infrastructure that put it at $2.5 billion. You think that's just damn skippy too, but what the hell does Steve Darling know about sports? So fuck Steve Darling, fuck his fake smile, and fuck his opinions on hockey, none of which are interesting if you look at his Twitter feed. But again, listen to the lunch show with Sadi Arshaw. He's lovely. So we have queued up the breakfast television 
introduction to Sobolski, Darling, and Lawrence. And when the host asks what will be different about this show, the result is kind of beautiful. <laughs> Okay, first of all, 1991 called. Um, I feel like if we're not all ready for this by now, we'll never be. Um, but okay, let's do that. Okay. Wait, sorry. Huh? <laughs> 1991 called. I know because they left a message on the answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no. Okay, <laughs> okay, <cut> that. <laughs> That was great. Uh, okay. It's not that big of an entourage, but okay. Team. Well, this is this is a new era for sports. You know, this is a hockey city. There's so much to celebrate. But how is this truly going to be different for the average sports fan out there looking for something new? <laughs> Well, well, I think we're going to be, well, I think, I think our uh, our uh, program director just said, you know, we have a three-person team, which is going to be neat and unique on the morning show. And- so what sets your show apart from the other sports talk shows out there? Pause. I love the dead silence. That you could drive a semi-truck through. There's three of us? Yeah. Well, slap my ass and call me Hayes Noodles and the O-Dog. Three hosts. Like, like the, the bro Jake and Dave Pratt have brought in Dave Tomlinson for this season, so they're basically three people on that show too that they're competing with. I guess our show doesn't have enough corporate white mediocrity for two people. We had to stretch it across three. And we're gonna be a three-headed monster. So okay. I'm gonna be the person in between these two uh, fine gentlemen that are well known in this market, and we're gonna provide a lot of fun. As James said, you know the morning commute can be a little bit of a grind, but who wants to wake up grumpy? Nobody. No. So we're and good luck keeps us all employed. Thank right. you. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, you might complain about getting through the massive yeah. tunnel yeah. or yeah. getting over the portman, but honestly, like gridlock. That's what that might be a problem with the NDP waving tolls on the port man, but you know, anyway. We call a captive audience radio. Right. You're stuck with us. <laughs> I think also it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because you know I can't tell you how many times this is Steve Darling speaking right now. By the way, uh, you know you finish your show and then you sit around and talk about issues, whether it be you know sports and, and not necessarily just sports, a lot of other things that are people lives as well. So that's what we want to bring to it is really uh, um, basically what people saw me doing for 15 years. I'm going to do with two new friends and. So we're going to have an opportunity to talk about a lot of different issues. And 95% of it's going to be sports-based, which is going to be a lot of fun because we want people to... It's amazing how much time Steve Darling spends saying absolutely nothing. Like, I, I, with Dave Pratt, I don't know what he's saying, but I know that it's something. Anyway. Can, can be part of the conversation as well. And that's you're not going to teach us how to cook this time. No, right? like, no, 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 I learned so. my lesson no. about that. Yeah. 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 Like you could cook no, all not at all. That's, that's, that's the magic of television. Sorry, I just want to, I just want to pause you there. Um, what I really love about what he, he is saying there is that they're going to talk mostly about hockey, but some of the things they're going to talk about aren't going to be hockey related. But, you know, of course he's going to keep politics out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be, have anything to do with his politics. Exactly. Exactly. Like just how Jamie McLennan on Overdrive will like, he'll, he'll roast, I don't know, like Bono for saying something political during his show and then never fail to once a week throw in a dig at the Alberta NDP. None of that from Steve Darling. No, 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 no. There's not, uh doesn't it doesn't it sound too like how 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 they're genuinely friends like they really they're, <laughs> yeah I can tell they have they have a really nice rapport there's like a Walter White level of chemistry happening between these three um, yeah so it works so but it's gonna be a little, I'm really like, like I love how like, dismissive of James Sabolsky Steve Darling is there like you can kind of see that Sabolsky's trying to create some chemistry like some banter with Steve Darling and he totally totally uh, rebuffs him looking forward to the opportunity and you know i my career began in radio so i'm sort of coming back and and it's been it's been a lot of fun so far i mean getting to meet these guys we had a our dinner last night which was a lot of fun and we we if steve darling told me that playing with puppies in a ball pit was fun i don't know if i believe him <laughs> <sighs> anyway uh this is who sportsnet got to compete against two guys vancouver has been dying for an alternative to um jake edwards is He's a 90s rock station host who's marketed as a comedian, which eh, Dave Pratt is is often unintentionally funny. Um, I'll give you an idea of what Pratt is like as a host. And hey, I follow a bot on Twitter that reminds me to drink water. So what do I know about anything? 
Dave Pratt once claimed that poker is as physically taxing as any other sport <laughs> and then stormed off set when Don Taylor <laughs> called him on it. Don Taylor's awesome and Sportsnet should have found a way to get him. But um, yeah, I'm not saying it was bad radio. I'm saying he shouldn't be this hard to beat. Uh, Dave Pratt once claimed that every contract an NHL player signs has a, quote, morals clause regarding steroid use. And when Ray Ferraro, who has actually signed a bunch of them, said it was a bunch of baloney, Pratt doubled down because, well, let's let's show the pl- clip. We have it uh, queued up, and it's equally amazing. Okay, it's here beautiful. We go. Oh, God, it's so good. It's so good. The first voice you're going to hear is uh, Dave Pratt, followed by a- an interrupting Ray Ferraro. And on every contract that every one of those players signed, it said... Steroids are illegal. It does. You've seen that. They have been banned. No, 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 no. no, 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 no let that go. Baloney. No. They have been banned in baseball since 1991. <laughs> and it says that on the contract. And every contract. It's a morals clause. It, it's included in every professional contract. You've signed them. You know that. No, I they haven't. Broke, they knew. No, I they knew full David, well. Do they, not put. Do not put words in my mouth. Do not do that. That pisses me off to no end when you do that. There is nothing in any contract. I've signed lots of them. You haven't. My- oh, so good. <laughs> Do not. Do not. <laughs> I love Ray Ferraro. <laughs> Me too. Ray Ferraro is wonderful. Oh, he's my friend. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, give me that over Steve Darling every day, please and thank you. Uh, at least Sportsnet is getting Scott Rintoul to host the afternoon drive show. He's worth a damn as a host. The sad part is that Sportsnet has perfectly good in-house talent that they didn't use. Go off the board, bring in Dmitry Filipovich as a host. He's local. He talks about advanced stats and concepts in an accessible way. You get Filipovich, Jody Vance, and find a way to steal Jeff Patterson. Boom, there's your morning show. Of course, if you bring in Filipovich, he might actually criticize Canucks management and the direction ownership is going, and that's a little too controversial for the station with the broadcasting rights. And that's what's not upsetting Taylor about the Vancouver Canucks today. He's doing just fine. Thank you very much. Doing just fine. No complaints. Well, I think that's enough for one podcast. Uh, We have more segment ideas and fun stuff planned for another time. But before we go, here's Alaris with a very important commentary. Folks, if you're out for a walk and you come across a caterpillar or a worm or a snail, please, please move it off the sidewalk. And that's all we have time for today. Follow us on at PuckFacePod on Twitter. Find our episodes on the PuckFacePod YouTube channel, all lovingly captioned by us, and not that shitty auto-caption thing, I promise. Download us on iTunes or wherever free podcasts are sold. Or just listen to us on SoundCloud if you want it that way. I know I do. Now get out of here, you PuckFace.